<laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the other side of the coin and welcome to your Chelsea 3 Club America new match reaction, post-match reaction, match review. Look, much, much better performance from that uh, game against Celtic and it needed to be. And I like the way how Enzo Maresca, you know, post that match against Celtic, really addressed the fact that where we were going wrong, he talked about how off the ball, we weren't pressing well enough. We didn't know what to do off on the ball, off the ball. Uh, no, sorry, off the ball. We didn't know when to go up and when to go back. Um, and he really addressed that. He really addressed that situation. Like a manager that can be open about where things are going wrong. And then in the following match, we go out there and we address those situations and we rectify it. And that's exactly the, that what we've done in this match against Club America. Look, a lot of you guys said Club America, no joke. Um, of course, we should be a lot better and no doubt about that than Club America. But Club America, their season is well underway. Um, this isn't the preseason sort of match for them. Uh, they, they've been a very strong team in, in the Mexican League. And uh, we saw from a possession base, uh, from a possession point of view in the first half, especially, they're quite good. Uh, on the ball but look overall we defended really well and we started the game off um, house on fire getting that penalty straight away straight up for me one of the you know notable key performers in this match was Romeo Lavia ladies and gentlemen Romeo Lavia there's been now two games in this preseason where I've been really impressed obviously in, against Celtic everyone was bad we can just chalk that off like good that we had that loss maybe it was a good kick up the backside to really make us feel that there's so much hard work that needs to happen before we can even think about Chelsea Football Club doing anything substantial in the upcoming season. But Romeo Lavia is having a very good preseason so far and there's still quite a few games left. And I want to see him continue that way. But he was everywhere, man. Defensively, offensively, in midfield. He was covering ground. He was getting the interceptions. He was tackling. He was making really, really good passes. And, uh, you know, he's driving up front and wins that penalty. So big up to Romeo Lavia. Big, big standout player for me once again. And when the season starts, look, it is a conundrum. What are you going to do with Lavia, Caicedo, Enzo? Enzo, we're going to talk about. Looks like he is playing further up. He is playing as a number eight. So maybe maybe Romeo Lavia is going to be penciled down as that deepest midfielder. And Caicedo and Enzo Fernandez will probably play as, as number eight. And maybe not all of them can play together. Uh, we shall see. We shall see what happens. Uh, obviously, Enzo Fernandez is his first 45 minutes in the preseason. So a long way to go until he is match fit. But Romeo Lavia, standout. Second player that I really want to talk about is Keenan Dewsbury Hall, ladies and gentlemen. Even though he was a bit rusty up front, it's so clear to see Keenan Dewsbury Hall is going to be a huge, huge player for us. His impact on the left side, I like him a lot better than Nkunku in the left side. Keenan Dewsbury Hall, he understood, he, like, he knows where to be. He's always available for a pass. He's always somehow there in the, in the final third, whether it's inside the box, whether it's just outside the box. He could have scored himself three goals. Lovely assist as well for Mark Gui. Well-deserved goal for Mark Gui. Um, with that header, we're going to come to him. But Keenan Dewsbury Hall, KDH, ladies and gentlemen. This guy will be a big player. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we... Look, I know I said in the, in the, in when, when that transfer happened, like it was probably not necessary. And I still hold by that. It's not necessary. But now that he's he, now that he's he, I fully understand that he can, he can give us something on the left side. Um, and, and, and look, potentially Cole Palmer, if you play him in that position, would probably give us the same sort of uh, same sort of contribution, if not even more. But good to have someone in the likes of Keenan Dewsbury Hall who understands Maresca's game. And he's going to help us out a lot. And I think he's going to score a lot of goals. One thing I will say in regards to Keenan Dewsbury Hall is that, look, we've always said he's a decent player. No one has ever disputed that he's not a good player. It was more the fact that it wasn't really necessary. But now, look, I'm happy with the whole situation. The one thing I will say is that Conor Gallagher, with Keenan Dewsbury Hall, the way he's performed, and I'm not saying he was outstanding, but you can tell it's going to have a massive impact on our team. Conor Gallagher is not going to play for this team, 100%. There's news about Conor Gallagher that he's apparently declined some Chelsea offers in the last couple of months. He's already you know, declined the Aston Villa one. There's the Atletico Madrid one that's pending. Conor Gallagher won't play for Chelsea Football Club. As simple as that. And Conor Gallagher needs to move on and, and accept that Atletico Madrid deal. It's it's a it's a too good like a deal that's too good to be true. So yeah, 
Keenan Jewsbury Hall will be one of the mainstays, and Conor Gallagher honestly will not see any minutes at Chelsea Football Club. Needs to move on. Next up, I want to talk about some of the defensive players. Reese James now slotting in as RCB. Perfect, perfect position for him, ladies and gentlemen. He looked at home, he looked at ease, and that high line with Reese James is a lot better. He can recover his dynamic, his physical. Um, and I like him. I like him at the RCB position. Solid performance today. Obviously, he's going to miss out on the first few games due to uh, suspension. But we've got other players that can play RCB. We don't have to worry about Malo Gusto. This, that, that Malo Gusto is actually playing a different role now. So they're not interchangeable, Malo Gusto and Reese James. We don't have a right back, really. RCB, Reese James, beautiful. Tossen, another one in the middle. CCB, I've, I've been calling out that Tossen should be playing in the middle. And I love the fact that he, uh, you know, Enzo Maresca played him there. Uh, looked very, very composed, very astute in whatever he did in terms of ball playing, in terms of off the, off the ball, uh, and marshalling, you know, exactly where the line needs to be. So perfect from Tosin. And I really liked how the the penalty that uh, Romeo Lavia won, Medueke had the ball and he's, he was he was wanting to, Medueke just desperate to take a penalty, which he got at, at the end, his third, uh, the, the third goal. Um, Tosin went up to Medueke for that, uh, penalty and he said mate just give the ball back give it to Nkunku so I like that attitude from Tosin real leadership attitude there from Tosin so really good good to see him there but he should much better that's where he needs to be LCB still a bit iffy needs to get better and better but overall whole oh, he better than Celtic game Robert Sanchez as well looks like the whole Jorgensen a goalkeeper coming into Chelsea Football Club has kicked him into gears as well Robert, uh, Robert Sanchez some very good saves in the first half so one really excellent right-hand save and better distribution all up, much more composed. Um, Marlo Gusto. Marlo Gusto, ladies and gentlemen, another big, big, uh, you know, confidence-boosting performance from Marlo Gusto and big up to him as well, man. Uh, we must say, playing as left-back, inverting, some really good drives through the middle. So we've got quite a few options for that inverting uh, inversion, basically, roles. Uh, for players to play. Viga came on in the second half. And of course, the big one, Mark Kukurea, who I think plays that role to the T, absolute best. So look, Marlo Gusto, big up to him, played exceptionally well. And Kunku up front, look, first half, I wasn't too impressed, even though he got himself that penalty goal. Second half, he was getting a little bit more involved. And I think him on that left side, him on that right side is yeah, not that great, but he's going to have to find some feet on that right side. Um Obviously, once we have more players coming back, it's going to change. Maybe Nkunku might be tried up front. We haven't seen Nkunku play as a striker as yet, so that's something that we need to see. Keenan Jewsbury Hall on that left side was a lot better than Nkunku on that left side. However, when Nkunku in the second half, that's where he played a lot better. That nice dribble that he made uh, to win that penalty. But I would still rather have Keenan Jewsbury Hall on that left side as opposed to Nkunku. Nkunku, as I said, was playing in the right side where I don't think he played that well in, in the first half. So let's see. Let's see how Nkunku progresses. Medueke, look, overall, gets himself that goal. Some bits were good. Some bits weren't. As the half went on in the first half, the first probably 35 minutes was awful from him. After that, the final 10 minutes in the first half, there was two good opportunities that he created. Should have got assists. Uh, and then obviously in the second half, he created a really good opportunity for Armando Breuer where he should have scored. So this is what you're going to get with Madueke. Things that are not going to be good, things that are going to be good. Um, need to see a lot more consistency. Need to see him do that one-touch pass, which he did uh, one time in the second half with Mala Gusto. And that you know, eventuated into an opportunity as well. Um, Magui up front as a striker gets himself that goal. Work rate, it's been good. But I think as the match went on, he started off flying. But as the match went on, I don't know if he got involved too often enough. That's something he needs to look at. Look, overall, we need a striker. We need a striker. I think Magui is someone I can be happy with him as a as a backup, someone who can learn off a, off a serious striker up front. But overall, probably should probably should be a backup. Um, but nonetheless, uh, so far, it's been a good preseason for Mark Green. Well-deserved goal. Good header. Even though I think it was probably straight to the goalkeeper. As I recall, it ended up going in. But it wasn't a clean, clean goal. It was a clean header. It just hit the goalkeeper before it went in, I think. Um, that, that's what I can recall. Raheem Sterling on the left side. Once again, like Medueke. Some bits are good. Some bits not that great. Um and this is the inconsistency. I can, I can see why Chelsea Football Club won a winger. I understand it because even Mudrik, when he came on in the second half, even though it was for a short amount of time, 
um, nothing for us to really, you know, get too excited about. So I, I, I get why Chelsea wants a new, a new uh, winger, but we have to get someone who's who's able to produce assists, who can contribute with goals. So let's see, let's see what happens. Whole heap of other changes happen. Enzo Fernandez, as I said, ladies and gentlemen, came on um, first forty-five minutes. Uh, let's let's watch how it all progresses. It was good to see. Apparently, a few people were saying that Enzo Fernandez and Wesley Fofana after the match they hugged. So it was good to see that the things have moved on, and then hopefully we can forget about the whole incident now, uh, and and people can learn from it. Ben Chilwell, look, he's another misfit, but he did make a really good effort with the defensive save right at the end. But overall, still a misfit. So yeah, overall, ladies and gentlemen, I felt that much better performance than than Celtic. Something to be happy about a lot of positives to take but we have to keep working we've got to keep working we've got man city next up on saturday evening uk time sunday morning my time here in sydney australia and let's see we've got to keep building and building and then be ready for that premier league game we've still got a couple of big players to come back cole palmer kaisido but this game very happy very happy with enzo maresca the way he's corrected some of the issues uh, against celtic and um Let's see. Hopefully, we can keep building on this. Let me know your thoughts, ladies and gentlemen, on the entire match. Um, but, yeah, overall, a good outing. Goals from Nkunku, uh, Medueke, and... Um, who's called the other one? Nkunku, Medueke. Who scored the second goal? Who scored the second goal? Um... We should have it here. Mark Gui, yeah. How could I forget that header? Yeah, Mark Gui. Mark Gui. But yeah, and Jorgensen came on as well in the second half who looked very good uh, as, 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 as a goalkeeper. Some good distribution as well. So let me know your thoughts, ladies and gentlemen, in the entire piece. Smash the like button if you're here for the first time. Subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Until next time, take care. See ya.